My name is Ethan and this happened to me in 2018. So, my old man and I decided to try a different vacation that year. It was just the two of us. My mom stayed home, my old man is a hunter, and we decided to do this crazy hunting trip to Montana. I've hunted with him forever, whitetail mostly, but we thought it would be fun to go for something different, try to bag a big elk. He loves the mountains. Me too. We researched for weeks, booked a guide and got all of our stuff packed up. Montana was a long drive, but we'd planned some scenic stops along the way. The first few days of getting there were fun. We passed through these giant rolling grasslands and then hit the mountains, and it was all trees and snow. Different from back home. We stopped off at this huge natural spring place. The water was hot and smelled like rotten eggs. The old man laughed at my face. Finally, a couple days into our long drive, we hit our spot in Montana. It was this huge swath of national forest, pretty remote. I have to say, I was glad we hired a guide because it was so remote, and this guy knew the lay of the land. His name was Bill. He was a big old bear of a man with a thick beard and a funny way of talking, but he seemed like he knew his stuff. Bill set us up in a little cabin just on the edge of the wilderness area. Rustic, basic, but it did the trick. Had an old pot-bellied stove and enough firewood to last us. The first night was pretty easy. We just cooked up some chili we brought. Bill showed us the area on a map and we got some sleep. Next morning, bright and early, Bill knocked on our door and took us deeper into the forest. We were looking for elk, those big, majestic, deer-like things. We hiked for hours. Man, it was different from back home. Much steeper hills and denser woods. We were getting higher in altitude, too, and all that climbing with our packs left me huffing and puffing. We heard some rustling a few times in those first few days, but never actually saw an elk. Bill said they were shy, skittish, and easily spooked. The old man just joked about how I was probably scaring them off with all my grunting and sweating. He's a real comedian, my old man. Bill told us to stay quiet, stay disciplined, and eventually, we'd catch our elk. Then, that night, the fourth night of the trip, something felt off. I woke up in the pitch dark. It was quiet, too quiet. No crickets chirping or whine through the trees, like that usual outdoors background noise. And then, I heard it. A low rustling from outside the cabin. I nudged the old man, but he just grumbled and rolled over. I got up, heart pounding, and peeked out the dusty window. That's when I saw its shadow. Huge. Way bigger than any human, hunched against the old tree trunk by the shed. Now, I'm not a superstitious guy, but something felt wrong about that shadow. It just stood there, still as a statue as if it knew I was watching. The next morning, I told Bill and my old man what I saw. They figured it was probably just a bear or a moose, and they didn't seem too concerned. It put me on edge, though. The idea of something out there, watching us. That day, we set up our positions. This was the plan. Bill would do some calls to attract an elk, and my old man and I would be concealed down the trail, wait for one to come into view. We went to our spots, set up camp chairs, and waited. Bill started with this bugling noise, high-pitched and kind of eerie, echoing through the trees. Then we waited. My old man was quiet. He was deadly serious when hunting. We sat there for hours, the trees still and silent all around us. And then that damn rustling started again. I was sure it was coming from behind us, from the direction of the cabin. I was antsy. Something was off. I looked at the old man. He motioned with his chin, his eyes scanning the line of trees as steadily as before. I tried to ignore what was creeping me out. Then Bill bugled again, and something answered. It was a crash of branches. Something big was moving through the dense undergrowth. Then silence. And then... Steps. Slow, heavy, thudding steps. They were close. Too close. Something was on our trail, something huge, and it was definitely not an elk. Suddenly, I saw it. A giant, hairy shape, like nothing I'd ever seen. At least eight, maybe even nine feet tall, 
striding through the trees like it owned the place. It was bipedal, walking on two legs, but not like a human, more like an ape, covered in thick, dark fur, huge claws on its hands, and a long, tapered snout. My blood ran cold. Bill always told us to be prepared for anything out here, but I don't think he meant this. The old man next to me had gone completely still. I think he saw it too, but he didn't make a sound. The huge creature got within thirty feet of us, then it just stopped. I looked it straight on, but I couldn't see its eyes in the shadows under the trees. My pulse was racing. I swore my heart was loud enough for that thing to hear. The thing looked... curious. Almost like it was studying us. For a terrifying, insane moment, I thought it might try to communicate. But then it let out this bone-chilling growl, low and rumbling, rising in its throat, and it charged. My old man was already on his feet. He fired his rifle. Boom! So loud it nearly deafened me. He fired again, and again. I fumbled for my rifle as fast as I could, hands shaking. The thing was fast, unbelievably fast. I could see the muscle and sinew rippling under that dark fur. But it was big, and with each shot from the old man I could see it flinch, slowing down a touch. That's when I got my aim and fired. Again, and again. It roared in pain, a mix of fury and anguish, and it stumbled back. The ground under its feet shook and it knocked into a tree, the impact sending dead branches flying. I felt a surge of relief. Maybe we'd hurt it. Maybe we had a chance. But the darn thing wasn't done. It lunged back up, scrambling through the trees like a wounded, vengeful beast. We kept firing. We just kept firing until the shots echoed through the entire forest. And then, just like that, it vanished. The trees went silent. Only the heavy echoes of our gunshots bounced between the ancient pines. The gunshots shattered the stillness, and for a moment, the only sound was the rain of spent cartridges hitting the forest floor. Then we stared at the spot where the thing had been, but there was nothing. No cries of pain, no thrashing or crashing through the trees. We waited. One minute, two. Every muscle in my body was coiled in tense anticipation, hands slick with sweat on the stock of my rifle. I caught sight of my old man's face, weathered, etched with the same taut mix of concern and determination that I knew was reflected in my own. We slowly moved forward, rifles raised and ready, following the trail of broken branches and overturned leaves. No blood, no sign of where that monstrous thing could have disappeared to. Then I saw it, a single huge footprint pressed into the soft earth, deep and clawed, not human, not an animal I'd ever learned about. This thing was real, as real as the gun in my hands, and that made it terrifying. We couldn't find it. After that frantic, adrenaline-soaked chase, the thing was gone. We backtracked all the way to the cabin, Bill, my dad, and myself on high alert, senses straining for any sound that wasn't the wind or the crunch of needles beneath our boots. There was nothing but an unsettling emptiness that hung heavier than the twilight. Back at the cabin, we barricaded the door, checked every window, and hunkered down to wait. Bill lit the old wood stove, and the flickering warmth did little to chase back the chill in my bones. We didn't speak much. No need to state the obvious. Out there in those dark woods, we weren't alone. We kept watch through the night, taking shifts and napping in fitful bursts, every creak of wood or gust of wind jolting me fully awake. Sleep felt like a luxury, a weakness. Finally, dawn came filtering through the dense pines a weak, gray light. The moment it was light enough to see, we ventured out with rifles in hand, searching the perimeter. Still no trace of the creature, but that feeling, that primal instinct, screaming that we were being watched, never went away. That afternoon, we packed up in grim silence. There was no need for words. We all knew we couldn't stay. This trip was over, a nightmare we'd luckily survived. We left the cabin, Bill taking the lead, the old man and I behind him, covering his back. We hiked in a tight formation, eyes scanning every flicker of movement in the trees. We drove for hours, 
barely a word spoken in the truck. My mind raced, trying to process what we'd seen. It couldn't have been real, but I knew deep down it was. I couldn't let this go, couldn't pretend it hadn't happened. I wasn't crazy. When we reached the next town, we went straight to the local police station. I felt ridiculous recounting the tale. A nine-foot-tall, hairy monster roaming the woods of Montana. The officers exchanged worried glances, humor dancing in their eyes. I expected disbelief, even mockery. Then one of the officers, a weathered, older man named Roy, leaned forward with interest. We get reports of strange sightings up in those mountains. Usually folks just passing through. Tourists seeing things after dark, he said. Never been able to substantiate anything, though. You mind if I ask where you were camped out? I described the location to him. He nodded grimly. Yeah, we had a group of hikers go missing up there a couple years back, he said slowly, weighing his words. Never found a trace of them. A wave of nausea washed over me. People had disappeared there, and we had come so close. My old man put his hand on my shoulder. I looked at him and saw the same realization mirrored in his eyes. We weren't alone, and this had been going on longer than we imagined. Officer Roy took a detailed report, every aspect of our encounter, every description we could offer of that impossible creature. We felt less insane once it was on paper, maybe with a physical record, with our experience the police could prepare. Maybe there would be a warning to others. Maybe they'd find something, some hint about what this thing was. After leaving the police station, a silence fell over us as we climbed back into Bill's truck. There was an understanding now, a knowledge deeper than words could express. We drove away from that small town, and I never looked back. The memory stayed with me, though. In the nights after, in the quiet of my own room, with the curtains drawn shut, I would see that dark shape against the trees. I would hear the crashing steps, the throaty growl of something inhuman, and the memory of the terror was as potent as the day it happened. But I also remembered the look on Officer Roy's face. Remembered the way his eyes narrowed, not with dismissal, but a spark of something else. A determination that maybe, just maybe, the mountains of Montana hid something more than trees and wildlife. Maybe, with enough people taking notice, we could understand what lurked unseen, name the monster hiding in plain sight, and fight back. My name is Benjamin. Well, most folks call me Ben for short. I've always been a bit of an outdoorsman. When I was just a kid, Dad would take me out camping, fishing. I loved it. I always did. Now don't get me wrong, I like the city life, grew up in it, still live in one now. I like concerts, bars, I like having everything I need within a five minute drive, but sometimes, sometimes a guy just needs to get away from it all. My buddies back at the office, they never got it. Always making jokes about me wanting to live out in the sticks or asking me why I'd rather spend my weekend shivering in a tent when I had a nice, warm bed at home. Ha! Huh. Like any of them had ever slept outside a day in their lives. This past summer I was feeling that need to get out strong. I needed the smell of pine needles and campfire smoke. I wanted to hear owls at night and the sound of the creek running over rocks. I told myself that I'd head out to the Black River National Forest up in Missouri. I knew a few good spots for setting up camp back in those woods, places where I could disappear for a couple of days and not see another living soul. Packed my truck with my gear, my trusty old tent, sleeping bag, stove, lantern, everything I needed for a weekend alone. Hit the road right after work on Friday. Six hour drive, but I didn't mind. Sometimes getting there is half the fun, right? I stopped at this roadside grill I knew of, grabbed a burger and a beer. By the time I got deeper into the woods, it was pitch black. Finally, I found my turn off and headed down the old forest road. Bumpy, full of potholes, 
The branches whipped against the sides of the truck and the headlights cut through the dust. Finally, I reached my clearing. Hell, if it weren't for the faint glow of the city lights off in the distance, I'd have been in complete darkness. But the stars... Damn, you don't get to see them like that in the city. I stretched my legs, took a deep breath. Yep, this was exactly what I needed. Unpacked the minimum this time. Just tent, sleeping bag, and some food. I ate a sandwich and turned in. I was beat from the day. Figured I'd get a fire crackling in the morning and have some proper grub. The next day, that's what I did. Got a fire going, cooked some bacon and eggs, washed it down with strong coffee. Pure bliss, let me tell you. After that, I figured I'd do some exploring. It was always fun seeing what kind of stuff I could stumble upon in these woods. Plus, a walk would do me good. Hours went by, just me strolling through the trees, enjoying the sun on my back. Now, I've been in this forest before, but I never went too far off the familiar paths. I always liked the idea of getting a little bit lost, though. Makes you feel like a real adventurer, doesn't it? Well, this time I think I got myself more than a little bit lost. It wasn't long until I didn't recognize a thing. But hey, no big deal. I just backtracked a bit until I recognized a big old oak tree I'd seen earlier. Back at camp, I cooked up some sausages and beans, the good simple stuff. I watched the fire die down to glowing embers and lay in my sleeping bag, staring up at those crazy stars. I was thinking about that funny co-worker of mine, always talking about how camping was like paying to be uncomfortable. Idiot. I felt a deep wave of satisfaction wash over me. I'd rather be out here than anywhere else in the world. I fell asleep with a smile on my face. The morning wasn't as bright for some reason. Cloudy, a little drizzly. Figured I might pack up and head home a bit early if the weather didn't let up. But before I had a chance to decide, I heard it. At first, it was so faint I told myself it was my imagination. Kind of a rustling sound, mixed with something else. I sat stock still, listening. My heart was starting to pound a little faster. Then I heard it again, a little louder this time. It sounded like heavy footsteps, snapping branches underfoot. Whatever it was, it was big and it was coming closer. I froze. Adrenaline kicked in. Maybe it was a bear? I had never seen one out here, but you always hear those stories. I grabbed my axe, not exactly ideal for a bear attack, but better than nothing, and then... Silence. Absolutely nothing. It was like whatever had been out there had just vanished into thin air. I figured I must have been spooked by some deer or a raccoon. It had to be, right? Still, I kept a tight hold on that axe. Later that afternoon, I was doing the washing up when I heard it again. This time closer again and definitely no deer. It sounded like... God, how do I even describe it? It was bipedal, I know that much, and huge, every step it took sounded like it would shake the ground. And then there was a grunt, a deep, guttural thing. It sent chills down my spine. My first thought was, get the hell out of here. I could be gone in fifteen minutes, back to the city, safe and sound, before this thing even knew where I was. But the other part of me, the stubborn part, whispered, Stay and see what it is. I knew it was stupid. It was reckless. But damn it, curiosity is one hell of a drug. I decided I would stay, just for a bit longer, just to see. I was ready, though. Axe in hand, my senses prickling. My heart was racing like it was trying to jump out of my chest. I saw it later that day. It was moving along the tree line, and for a moment the sun shone through a gap in the branches. Now my dad taught me a thing or two about hunting, so I've seen my fair share of animals. But what I saw in the woods? Damn. I don't have a word for it. It was... huge. Eight feet tall, maybe more. Covered head to toe in a matted brownish fur. It had a long, flat face, longer arms than any animal I'd ever seen. But what got to me the most were the hands. They weren't paws, and they weren't human 
but they were something like both, with long, gnarled fingers. It loped along on its two legs, swinging its arms as it moved. I held my breath, watched it disappear deeper into the trees. It was gone as quickly as it had appeared. After that, the rain came down hard. Figured it was a good sign to pack up and go. I didn't break any speed records, let me tell you. Every cracking twig, every sudden noise had me whirling around looking for it. It was following me at first, I could tell. I kept catching glimpses of movement out of the corner of my eye, just at the edge of the woods. I was nearly back at my truck when I finally saw it again, just standing there among the trees, still as a statue. Its eyes, I didn't want to think about those. But it was staring right at me. It wasn't threatening, more like it was observing, like I was its science experiment. Now I'm no coward, but I admit it, I was getting scared. It wasn't until I threw a good-sized rock in its direction that it finally took off, just vanished into the trees like the first time. I threw my stuff in the truck and got the hell out of there. I didn't stop until I hit that burger joint again. I ordered a double cheeseburger, fries, and the biggest chocolate shake they had. I guess the city boy in me needed a taste of civilization after all that. Never did go back to those woods. My buddies still poke fun, and I don't blame them. The story's pretty wild. Half the time I don't believe it myself. But then sometimes when it's real late at night and I see shadows moving outside my window... I was driving up north to clear my head, been working back-to-back -back shifts at the yard, needed to escape all that noise. My uncle has an old cabin up in the Boundary Waters, figured a week alone would be enough to get my bearings. First few days were quiet, took the canoe out, caught a few bass, nothing special, smoked cigars, played cards, slept late. It was paradise, and I was starting to find that peace I came for. Then my stuff started disappearing. First it was little things. A lighter gone from the porch table, my fishing line tangled in a tree. I thought I was losing my mind. But then a whole damn pack of smokes vanished from inside my pack. Now, that you don't just misplace. I chalked it up to an animal. A raccoon, maybe. But then I saw the prints. They weren't small, weren't bear tracks, either. They were big and wide, with toes that looked like gnarled, human fingers. That's when the hairs on my neck stood on end. Nights got worse. I'd swear I heard breathing outside the cabin. Heavy, raspy breaths that sent shivers down my spine. Then there were the rustling sounds like something circling the cabin. One night a rock smashed through my window. I grabbed my rifle, ready to blast whatever beast would be stupid enough to come at me. But there was nothing there, just empty woods, the shattered glass, and a nagging feeling that I was being watched. I knew I wasn't dealing with some critter. This was something else. Every instinct screamed at me to pack up, to hightail it back to civilization. But some foolish part of me, maybe the part that got me into trouble to begin with, wanted to know what the hell was in those woods. I started leaving things out see if anything would take the bait. Figured it was worth knowing what I was up against. A flashlight disappeared, then some jerky, then a whole can of beans. The hunger of whatever was out there was growing, and I felt it growing closer, too. It was almost a relief when I finally saw the beast lurking just beyond the tree line. I'll never forget it. Enormous, towering like a redwood, but with tangled matted hair all over. Face was mostly shadow, but those hands, those were huge, the fingers knobby and rough like old branches. I aimed my rifle, heart pounding so loud I was afraid it'd hear me. But before I could take the shot, it darted behind a tree, vanished back into the darkness. I waited, frozen, for a counterattack, but it never came. Next morning I found a mangled deer carcass by the lake, not scavenged, ripped apart. The sight turned my stomach. I knew this wasn't a hunting trip anymore. It was a fight for survival. I spent the day barring the cabin, 
nailed boards on the windows, braced the door with anything heavy I could find. There was no way I was sleeping out there again. As the sun fell, shadows stretched across the yard like gnarled claws. I made sure the rifle was loaded, shotgun by my side, and waited. It came in the dead of night. I heard the thump of its feet against the ground, the splintering of wood as it tried the door. It circled the cabin, roaring, a guttural sound that raised goose flesh on my arms. It tried a window, shattering the glass I'd boarded up. I fired my rifle through the broken pane. More roars, the thud of its body retreating. I could smell it, a musky, rotting stench that curled into the room. It went quiet for a while, long enough for the doubts to creep in. Maybe it was gone, maybe I'd scared it off. But then the screaming started. Not an animal scream, a human one. A woman's voice filled with terror, cut short with a sickening gurgle. I knew there'd been a few hikers camping nearby. My blood ran cold. This thing wasn't just after me. The rest of the night was a blur. I fired blindly into the darkness when the sounds got too close. Yelled myself hoarse, the futility a bitter pill to swallow. Part of me knew I'd never make it out of those woods alive, but another part, that same stubborn streak that got me here, clung to hope. When the first light of dawn pierced the darkness, the noises outside faded. I stepped out of the cabin, rifle shaking in my hands ready for what might still be lurking out there. The only thing left were tracks, those monstrous footprints leading back into the depths of the forest, and the faint, lingering smell of something wild and unnatural. The sunlight was harsh on my eyes as I stumbled out of the woods. I blinked, disoriented, the weight of the rifle in my hands suddenly too heavy. The forest behind me loomed like a shadowy beast, silent now, I turned and ran. Didn't matter where I was going. Town, highway, anywhere with people. The memory of those guttural roars and that woman's screams drove me forward, a panicked energy in my limbs. My feet pounded the dirt trail, breath burning in my lungs. I ran until I collapsed, my body finally giving out. When I could breathe again, I saw it. A dirt road. Civilization. I pushed myself up started walking. A truck rumbled past, kicking up a cloud of dust. I waved, desperation in my voice as I shouted. The truck screeched to a halt. A middle-aged man with a weathered face leaned out the window. "'You in trouble, son?' he called out, a cautious note in his voice. I just nodded, throat too tight to speak. He motioned me to climb into the truck bed. As we bumped toward town, I told him everything." The cabin, the tracks, the dead deer, the woman's screams. I expected him to scoff, figured he'd take one look at my wild eyes and write me off as some unhinged woodsman. But he didn't. He listened, brow furrowed in concern. Sounds like you might have had a run-in with the howler, he said finally. His voice was low, matter of fact. The what? I asked. The word hung in the air between us, heavy with dread. He told me stories. Old tales passed down about a creature that stalked the deep woods, a monstrous thing of hunger and rage. Locals whispered about strange tracks, missing hikers, screams in the night. They say it snatches folks when they're alone, never to be seen again, the man said grimly. That woman you heard. Well, there was a couple camping up north. She went missing a few nights ago. Search parties found nothing. I felt a chill that had nothing to do with the morning air. All those whispers in the night, the feeling of being watched. It wasn't my imagination. We reached the town, a small cluster of houses, a general store, and a gas station. The man dropped me off by the sheriff's office. Tell him what you told me, he said. They might not believe you at first, but you get enough folks with the same story. He trailed off, a flicker of pity in his eyes. I walked into the station, met by the stern expression of a deputy. I launched into my tale, the words tumbling out of me. He listened, skeptical at first, and then a flicker of uncertainty crossed his face as I described the tracks. 
By noon, a posse had formed. The sheriff, deputies, volunteers armed with rifles and flashlights. They followed me back into the woods, the air buzzing with tension. At first we found nothing but my panicked footprints and the faint smell of musk lingering on the breeze. Then we saw it. A massive imprint in the mud near the creek, the toes long and gnarled. The sheriff took a plaster cast. A murmur went up among the men. They'd seen tracks like this before, unexplained. The fear was a weight in the air, tangible now. We tracked the creature, following its enormous footprints deeper into the forest. The sunlight barely penetrated the thick canopy, shadows playing tricks on our eyes. Every rustle, every snap of a twig, sent a jolt of adrenaline through me. It was near dusk when we found the clearing. The ground was littered with bones. Animal. Maybe human. There was a cave opening, dark and ominous against the rocks. The stench of decay was overpowering. The sheriff raised his hand, motioning for silence. We approached cautiously, rifles raised. A guttural growl echoed from within the cave, making the hair on my neck stand on end. And then it emerged. The howler. Towering, monstrous, covered in matted fur. Its face was a mask of fury, twisted and vaguely human, mouth stretched wide with jagged teeth. Someone fired. The gunshot echoed through the trees. The creature roared, a sound that shook the ground beneath us. It charged, a force of primal rage. The men fired wildly, but the barrage of bullets seemed to do little to slow it down. I stumbled back, tripped over a fallen log. The creature lunged for me. I saw those gnarled hands reaching, the foul breath washing over me. Then the sheriff tackled it, wrestling it to the ground. More shots rang out. The creature howled, then went limp. It was over. I lay there, staring at the unmoving mass of fur and rage, knowing I'd never forget the sight. The sheriff helped me up, a grim look on his face. That ain't no bear, son, he said, shaking his head. The aftermath was a whirlwind. Search parties found the missing woman, or what was left of her. There were more disappearances in the area. Old cases reopened. The town was gripped by a shared sense of horror and a deep-rooted fear that lingered long after the creature's body was hauled away. News crews descended on the quiet town, but the sheriff kept them at bay, protecting my identity. People questioned me, of course, but with the evidence of the tracks and the creature's corpse, they couldn't simply write me off as crazy. Some folks started calling me a hero. I didn't feel like one. I felt lucky and scarred. The nightmares still wake me sometimes. The image of that creature, its inhuman fury, is seared into my memory. Yet there's also a sliver of grim satisfaction. The howler is gone. I survived. And maybe, just maybe, folks will start taking those tales of monsters in the woods a little more seriously. I always say the best deer stands are the ones folks leave you alone in. Sure, you haul your gear miles in, and you might sweat a bit getting set up. But come season, you got the backwoods to yourself, save for some critters with sense enough to keep away. That kind of quiet is more valuable than gold. See, I've been a hunter since I could hold my old man's rifle, know the land, know the animals, learn to find the game trails. Follow the tracks, pick a safe perch. Hell, learn to walk so soft the sparrows don't notice you coming. Most folks call it respect for nature. I call it being practical. This year, I dug in deep, real deep. Went off the trail maps everyone knows, into a slice of the Stanislaus Forest most ain't even seen on their fancy compasses. Got there by foot, tent on my back. Found a patch of ground with a good view, set up the blind. Wasn't nothing luxurious, but sturdy enough. And lord, those first few days? Perfect. The air was crisp like you wouldn't believe. The sky so clear the stars looked near enough to snatch. I even bagged a doe the second morning, clean shot. Made me wish I had the old truck running to haul it. But I'd learned to get by. That night's when things got... off. 
It's hard to say exactly what it was. A sound, maybe. Branches snapping further out than a deer ought to make. Or the hairs on my neck standing up. I remember thinking, damn coyotes, always bold this time of year. But something was off. Made my gut tighten. Wasn't just the sound, was the feel. Like being watched. Not by your average animal, mind you. By something too big, too smart. Like something had been tracking me back the whole way out here. Next couple days, I saw it. Well, kind of. Glimpses of movement at the edge of the trees, way bigger than any deer or bear I'd ever seen in these parts. At night, I'd hear rustling around the tent, sometimes like footsteps, not light either. Heavy, thumping things that shook the ground. The worst was the smell. God, the smell. Like a wet dog, only a thousand times worse. Rotten with something deep in the woods that should stay buried. Made me gag just thinking about it. Started to wonder if I'd stumbled into some crazy hunter's territory. Maybe even a poacher's hideout. But the more I thought, the less it fit. No traps sprung. No bait stations. Nothing that made sense for some old hermit. That's when it hit me. Those stories you hear whispered around campfires. The ones about things that ain't supposed to exist. That Sasquatch nonsense, all tall tales and bad campfire whiskey. Yet every hair on my body was screaming I wasn't alone out there. And whatever it was, it wanted me, or my kill, or maybe both. I kept watch, rifle ready. Nights were the worst. Whatever it was circled the blind, claws scraping on the canvas. Once, I swear, a hand-like thing tried to push under the flap. Almost filled my pants then and there, but I leveled the gun and fired a warning shot into the night. That sent whatever it was scattering, but it came back. Hungrier, angrier. Started circling tighter, shaking the whole damn blind. Figured it was time to act or become critter food. I slipped on my boots as quiet as I could, grabbed my knife and readied to make my stand. See, out here, it ain't just about hunting. It's about staying alive. Whatever was in those trees... I wasn't about to become its dinner without a fight. Counted my bullets. Checked the blade. I ain't the praying type, but I might have said one real quick. Then holding my breath, I ripped open the blind. I burst from that blind like a shot, stumbling into the trees. Didn't stop to think, just ran. Branches whipped my face. Pine needles cut my arms. But the pain just made me go faster. I could hear it lumbering behind me crashing through the woods with a force that shook the ground. My breath burned in my chest, legs ached, but I didn't look back. It was either run or be caught by whatever the hell was out there. Finally tripped over a root, went sprawling into the dirt. I scrambled up, expecting to feel claws sink into me, but nothing. Silence, save for my own ragged breathing. Had I outrun it? Doubtful. More likely it was toying with me like a cat with a mouse. I crouched, trying to listen past the blood pounding in my ears. Then, from off to the right, a crack of a branch. And that stench. Lord, that god-awful stench. It was circling me. I took off again, dodging trees, scrambling through brush. Had a flash of that doe I'd shot, the carcass hanging untouched by the blind. Thing probably had its fill, and was now after live bait. Me. My legs were giving out, lungs screaming, but right then, I saw it. A sliver of light through the trees, the road. I must have been closer than I thought. Lungs afire, I sprinted, pushing harder than I ever had in my life. Broke out of the woods, right onto the gravel shoulder. Didn't even look, just ran. Heard a roar like thunder behind me, the heavy thumping of its footfalls. Almost there, almost to safety. Then the ground disappeared beneath me. I tumbled down an embankment, landed hard on my back, the breath knocked out of me. Tried to scramble up, but my ankle throbbed like fire. Damn twig must have snapped it. Now I was trapped. I rolled, looked up. It was there, crouched at the edge of the embankment. Hulking shape, shadowed in the starlight. The only thing clear was that rotten meat smell. I could hear it snort, heavy breaths almost like laughter. 
It started down the slope, moving slow, like it knew it had me, and I did. No gun, no knife, leg useless. It got closer and closer. I squeezed my eyes shut, not wanting to see the teeth that would rip into me. But it didn't come. Open my eyes a crack. The creature was stopped just a few feet away. It stood up, towering over me now, fur matted with blood, claws long as knives. And the most unsettling thing, it almost looked human. Not quite, but more than an animal should. A low growl built in its throat. Was this it? My end? Then I heard it. Voices. Shouting. Men with flashlights cutting through the trees. They must have heard the commotion. The creature hesitated, then turned and bolted back into the woods, disappearing like a ghost. I lay there blinking, barely daring to breathe. When those men reached me, all I could manage to say was, There's something out there, something big. Hell, they didn't believe me then. Thought I was spooked by a bear or worse had cracked on my own. Called for backup, a forest ranger, maybe even a cop. Took them back to the blind, to the carcass. Showed them the clawed-up tent. That got their attention. The ranger recognized the tracks. Didn't belong to any animal they knew. The cops dusted everything for prints, but only found mine and tracks from that thing. Massive, misshapen, no match in the records. Took me back to the station. Filled out reports. Gave statements. I stuck to the story, even as their eyes told me they thought I was a lunatic. It wasn't until a few hours in when an old deputy came to question me that things changed. He sat down, looked me square in the eye. Son, he said, voice low, I might be old, but I ain't foolish. There's things in these woods your fancy science won't explain. Your grandpappy ever tell you stories about Sasquatch? And damn it all if I hadn't. When I was a kid, Grandpa would sit me down by the fire and spin yarns taller than he was about run-ins with the mountain giants. Never thought a word of it was true. The deputy nodded. There's been whispers about them since folks first settled this land. Sightings every few years. Disappearances no one makes sense of. We brush it off, but... He trailed off, then looked at me hard. I believe you, son and that makes this a whole lot more dangerous. Turns out this wasn't just about me anymore. If that thing had attacked once, it'd attack again. The whole town was at risk. We rallied a search party. Rangers, hunters, anyone with a gun and half a lick of backwoods sense. Spent the next few days scouring those woods. Found nothing but more of those tracks, leading deep into the Stanislaus, past where anyone dared to go. Folks were spooked. News traveled, drew in outsiders, cryptid hunters, reporters with cameras all hungry for a story. Turned my quiet little life into a damn circus. We never did catch the creature. Whatever it was, it's still out there as far as I know. But that ain't the end of the tale. See, after a while, the fuss died down. The news folks left, the monster chasers got bored. But me, I couldn't shake it. Couldn't sleep without seeing those clawed hands smelling that rot. And the others, the ones in the stories, the disappeared hikers, the hunters found half-eaten. Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd crossed paths with that thing and lived. Started getting calls, letters, a woman up in Washington, a fisherman from Montana, each with their own tale of a close encounter, a narrow escape. Seems I wasn't alone after all. And maybe... Just maybe, there's a reason those of us it touched survived. A reason the creature, the Bigfoot, keeps letting some of us slip through its claws. I don't know the answer, but I aim to find out. Folks call me Red. Not on account of my hair. That went gray years ago, but more for my, let's say, colorful past. I've always been a bit of a wanderer, you see. Spent most my life drifting from one dead-end town to another. Worked odd jobs, construction mostly, though I had a stint trapping in Alaska that's a hell of a story on its own. Always knew I wasn't meant to settle down, to have a mortgage and a mailbox with my name on it. So, I took my old pickup and a few bucks, 
and I'd hit the road whenever that restless feeling crept in. This time, about six months back, I wound up in the northern reaches of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, a town called Paradise. Yeah, I know. Ironic, ain't it? Place had seen better days. Lumbertown that mostly dried up once the big trees vanished. But I rented a beat-up cabin on the edge of Taquamanan Falls State Park, figuring a few months of quiet and fishing was just what I needed. And let me tell you, there's quiet, then there's UP quiet, the kind that rings in your ears at first. Now, I'm not the type to get spooked at a few bumps in the night. But even those first weeks, alone in that old cabin, well, the woods have a way of getting into your head. You know, those long, inky black nights, the whispering of branches you never see move, the way shadows flicker at the edge of your vision, just beyond the reach of the firelight. I figured it was my imagination going hog wild. Told myself it was just the city boy in me still adjusting. But then, little things started happening. Not much at first, just stuff that could be explained away if you tried hard enough. Missing food. My fishing gear unraveled. Tracks circling my cabin so wide you'd think a bear had waltzed through but with toes all wrong. Nothing too scary, but enough to put me on edge. See, I've been around the block, and I know the difference between a critter looking for scraps and something else. There was a feeling in the air, heavy and wrong, like being watched by eyes you couldn't see. That's when I started going out later. Once the tourists cleared out for the day and true night started to settle in, I'd take long walks on the trails, flashlight in hand told myself it was to get the lay of the land. But really, I think some part of me wanted to see what was out there, wanted to prove to myself I hadn't gone soft. One night, about a month into my stay, I finally got my wish. The trail had taken me further into the park than usual that night, the moon barely a sliver through the dense canopy overhead. The further I walked, the thicker the darkness seemed to get, pressing in like a physical weight. I was about to turn back when I heard it. A snap of a branch, too loud to be a deer. I stopped, heart pounding against my ribs, and slowly swung the weak beam of my flashlight across the trees. At first, nothing but those long, reaching shadows. Then, just for a second, two pinpricks of light flickered back at me, high above the forest floor. Too high for any animal I knew, way too high. Before I could do anything, they were gone, vanished into the all-consuming blackness. I stood there frozen, feeling ice cold despite the summer night. I knew those weren't the eyes of anything normal, anything that belonged in these woods. And even then, still the stubborn part of me argued. Tricks of the light, shadows, some nocturnal bird I didn't recognize. I convinced myself to walk back trying to chalk the whole thing up to a bad case of the spooks. But deep down, I knew better. The feeling of wrongness settled on my shoulders like a shroud. I wasn't alone out there, and whatever was watching me, it wasn't done. The next morning, I went into town, bought a rifle, a box of shells, and a whole mess of supplies. Canned food, batteries, extra ammo... Anything I reckoned would last me a while if push came to shove. Didn't tell a soul why I was stocking up. They'd likely just laugh at the old man going crazy out in the sticks. I told myself it was better that way. That was when the disappearances started. Folks going missing out on the trails. Campers, mostly. Search parties found nothing but ripped tents or abandoned gear, if that. The locals grew jumpy, whispering old stories about things that stalked the deep woods. I kept my mouth shut, knowing exactly what those shadows held and the part it had in the missing folks. Guilt gnawed at me, knowing I could have warned them. But some part of me, a dark, reckless part, was... curious. Wanted to see what I was truly dealing with. I spent the next weeks hunkered down in my cabin, studying the woods, listening for the sounds that weren't supposed to be there. It came in snatches, a mournful howl that raised the hair on the back of my neck, the cracking of underbrush too heavy and deliberate to belong to any deer. 
It was hunting, stalking, circling like a wolf around dying prey. And I, I was the prey. Then a few days ago, a break. I was out restocking my firewood when I spotted it. Massive, even in the twilight, hunched and hairy, standing stock still near the tree line. Its head swiveled and I caught a flash of, well, not exactly eyes. More like voids, pits of blackness in its shadowed face. They seemed to drink in the light, sucking away any warmth or life around them. I didn't wait around to admire the view. I dropped my axe, took off running back to the cabin. I could hear it lumbering after me, its footsteps booming like drums against the quiet of the forest. I barely made it inside, slamming the door shut and scrambling for my rifle. I hunkered down behind a window, peering out at the tree line, trying to catch sight of it. The silence stretched on, taut as a bowstring. My heart pounded in my ears, nearly drowning out the quiet whisper that slithered into my head. It knows where you are. The thing was playing with me, just like a cat with a cornered mouse. Then I saw it again, bolder this time. It stepped out of the trees, silhouetted against the dusky sky. It stood easily ten feet tall, maybe twelve, and its shoulders were wider than my old truck. Muscle and fur rippled under its thick, dark hide as it strode across my clearing, each step a silent thump of monstrous power. It tilted its head, and those awful pits that were its eyes fixated on my window. It seemed to stare right through me, piercing my hiding spot and seeing... seeing something more than just the scared man barricaded inside. It opened its maw in a silent snarl, revealing rows of teeth like railroad spikes. And then it charged. I slammed the rifle up against my shoulder and squeezed the trigger. The blast rattled the old cabin's windows. The creature let out a roar of pain, or maybe surprise. It reared back, clutching at a ragged wound in its massive chest. Even with the dim light, I could see the blood, dark and glistening, pumping from the hole. It wouldn't be enough to kill the thing, but maybe it would slow it down enough for me to get away. I didn't stick around to see. I bolted towards the back of the cabin, my clumsy feet thundering against the wooden floor. I had a half-baked plan, or at least a gamble, tucked in the back of my mind. There was a second door, leading out to a rickety shed. And in that shed? My stash of trapping gear and supplies. If I was lucky, I burst from the back of the cabin and lunged towards the shed, fumbling with the rusty latch with trembling hands. Inside the air was musty and stale, smelling of old grease and metal. My eyes darted frantically across the cramped space, searching for what I needed. There. A roll of heavy gauge wire, a couple of old rusted bear traps, and a few tools scavenged from various roadside stops over the years. It wasn't much, but it was all I had. Working fast, my fingers raw and clumsy with fear, I rigged a crude snare with the wire. I used a sapling to set up a tripwire, praying the creature was more brawn than brains. The thing was close, its heavy footsteps pounding through the undergrowth as it stalked me. I grabbed one last thing, a bottle of kerosene from the shelf, and retreated back to the cabin, shoving the heavy old dresser against the back door for good measure. I heard a grunt of frustration as it slammed against the barricade. I could almost see it, furious and bewildered, trying to smash its way through. Good. Buy me a few precious minutes. I crouched behind the window overlooking the clearing, rifle clutched in my white-knuckled hands. I doused the floor in front of the window with the kerosene, the harsh smell filling the room and making my stomach churn. There was no time for second thoughts. It broke through the trees and into the open. Even injured, it moved with terrifying speed. But I was ready for it. I pulled the lighter from my pocket, flicked it on, and tossed it onto the kerosene-soaked floor. The flames whooshed up, a wall of fire between me and the monstrous form now charging the cabin. It howled, stumbling back from the blaze, but it wasn't giving up. The thing started circling my makeshift fortress, searching for a way in. And then I saw it. The shed. My half-finished trap. 
There was no hesitation this time. I burst from the side door of the cabin, sprinting towards the shed. Just like I hoped, the creature lurched after me, its eyes fixed on me as I stumbled through the open shed door. I heard the whump as it smashed into the thin wooden wall, the sound of splintering boards filling the air. I spun around, slamming the shed door shut behind me as the monster's massive claws tore through the wood. But I was ready. I jammed the rusted bear traps into the floorboards on either side of the door, then looped the wire around the handle. I braced myself as the creature slammed its weight against the wood once, twice, three times. The door bulged inward, groaning ominously. But then I heard the snap. A howl, louder and more anguished than before, echoed through the forest. I risked a peek around the door frame. One massive leg was caught fast in the bear trap, tethered to the door handle by my makeshift wire. The creature thrashed and roared, trying to wrench itself free. My window of opportunity was open. I grabbed my rifle, steadied my aim at the massive head, and fired, and again, and again. Each blast echoed through the trees, each strike making the monster bellow and buck. Finally, with one last deafening roar, it went still, its hulking form slumped on the forest floor. I stayed crouched beside the shed long after the sounds of the struggle faded. I didn't move until the first weak rays of dawn cut through the trees. When I finally worked up the courage, I ventured out. It lay there, unmoving, a testament to the night's terrifying battle. Cautiously, I poked at the colossal body with my rifle barrel. Dead. Finally dead. I collapsed to the ground in exhaustion, relief washing over me like cleansing rain. I had survived. It took two days before the sheriff and the park rangers arrived, drawn by the gunshots and the reports of a disturbance from the folks in town. I still remember the look on their faces when I led them back to the clearing and showed them the dead creature, its existence denying everything they'd ever thought possible. Some called me crazy, said it was a bear, a hoax. But the ones who lived in those parts... The ones who had listened to the whispers in the woods for years? They believed me. They finally saw the truth in what I was saying. Some locals even started calling the creature the Bigfoot, maybe on account of its enormous size, or maybe as a way to reclaim some kind of control over the unexplainable that lurked in their forests. It had been there, stalking them all along, hidden in the shadows of their campfire tales. I didn't stay in paradise long after that. Sold the cabin, packed up my old truck, and drove until the road ran out. Every now and then, though, late at night, I still hear the crunch of heavy footsteps in the dark. I still see those hollow pits that seem to swallow the light, burning into my memory. I've always been a wanderer, but I reckon a part of me will always linger in those northern woods, a solitary watchman against the ancient darkness. I got up the other morning. It was one of those cold, gray days when even birds don't sing much. Figured I needed to split some firewood anyway, so might as well get an early start with it before it warmed up too much. Had my usual breakfast and grabbed my things. Old beat-up flannel, worn-out work pants, and the battered boots I swear have outlasted two dogs at this point. Axe already out back, leaning against the shed where I keep the woodpile. Place is an old hunting camp I got for a song and a dance years ago. See, I'm one of those folks who never got on with the big city rush. Give me a crackling fire and the quiet hum of the woods. That's my kind of paradise. Out here, it's just me and, well, mostly just me. Nearest town is a good 30-minute truck ride down dirt roads, and I ain't exactly what you call a social butterfly. Keeps things simple. Gotta work right away. That old axe ain't much to look at, but in my hands, it splits logs real clean. By the time the sun was high, I had a good supply chopped up for winter. Figured a break was in order, so I sat on a stump and had a swig of water. That's when I heard it. Sounded like a branch snapping. Not uncommon. But then it came again, a little louder and closer. Now I'm no nervous type, but being alone out in the woods, you learn to pay attention to the little things. 
something felt off. I got up, axe in hand. No sense in taking chances. I moved slow, scanning the trees. I knew there were bears and the occasional mountain lion around these parts, and even though they mostly keep to themselves, you just never know. I strained my ears, trying to figure out where it was coming from. Then, way up on the hillside, I saw a figure, too tall and lanky to be an animal, stood stock still behind a tree, just enough of it peeking out to be unsettling. I called out. Nothing. Then I started to get real uneasy. Now whatever it was, it knew I saw it, and that changes the game entirely. I moved toward the thing, slow and steady. I needed to get a better look. I gripped my axe a little tighter, fingers gone white on the worn handle. Step by step, I closed in. This thing had the build of a man, but there was something off in the way it moved. Long, jerky strides with something unnatural about them. As I got closer, the details began to chill me. I'd hunted all my life, seen all the usual wildlife, but this, this wasn't right. It was covered in a thick coat of dark, matted fur that seemed to shift and crawl in the dappled light. Its head was huge, snout too long, and its arms, Lord Almighty, those arms reached nearly to its knees. Now I'm no fool. I know the stories, the local legends of something out there in the deep woods. You dismiss most of it as campfire talk to spook the kids. That's what I always did anyway. But there I was, staring down the impossible. My heart was knocking a hole in my chest. Whatever this creature was, it looked massive and strong. Something in me, that old survival instinct, screamed to get the hell out of there. Yet, another part of me was frozen, a morbid curiosity gluing me to the spot. The creature suddenly twitched, head snapping in my direction. A low growl rumbled from deep in its chest, sending shivers down my spine. Then, before I could even process what I was seeing, it let out a blood-curdling roar and charged. I ain't never moved so fast in my life. I dropped the axe, turned and ran, stumbling and cursing through the undergrowth. I could hear it crashing behind me, its powerful strides making short work of the distance. Branches whipped into my face, tearing at my clothes, but I didn't dare look back. My lungs burned, every step a jolt of pure terror. I kept thinking my cabin must be close. Please let it be close. But with my heart pounding in my ears, I was losing sense of direction. Just when I thought I couldn't run any further, I saw it. The old woodpile and beyond it, the familiar slant of the cabin roof. It was a lifeline. I sprinted the last stretch, slamming the cabin door shut and fumbling with the rusty bolt. Outside it crashed into the woodpile, sending logs scattering. It let out another roar, shaking the flimsy door in its frame. I could smell its rank breath through the gaps in the wood. I stumbled over to the window, peeking out through a crack. It was circling the cabin, a dark, monstrous shape against the fading daylight. Claws, long and curved, raked the walls like it was trying to tear its way in. Each scrape was like nails on a chalkboard. My hands were shaking, breath ragged in my throat. The creature seemed to be tiring itself out, but the flimsy wood of my cabin wouldn't hold forever. I had to do something. I couldn't just stay there, wait to die. But what? I thought back to my truck. Could I make it? It wasn't far, but out there in the open, I'd be dead in seconds. I glanced toward the back of the cabin, eyes landing on the old shotgun. It was a long shot, but it might be my only one. Moving with a speed I didn't know I had left, I raced to the back room, heart slamming. The gun was there, leaning in the corner where I always kept it. I fumbled with the shells, loaded it in a desperate panic. That thing would break through soon. I crept back to the window, peeking out. The creature had circled back, tearing long gouges into the ground. It snarled, lunging at the wood, splinters flying. That was it. My moment. I kicked open the door, leveled the shotgun, and took aim. The blast thundered in my ears. One shot, two. Then I turned and bolted. Sprinting for all I was worth, I hurtled toward the trees, toward my truck. Every step, I expected to feel claws sinking into my back, dragging me down into the dirt. I made it. Flung myself inside the truck, 
slammed the door and fumbled for the keys. They slipped from my shaking hands, clattering to the floor. I cursed, scrambling for them. I heard the crashing of the creature getting closer, closing the distance. The engine roared to life. I slammed the truck into gear and tore down the dirt road, bouncing and swerving like a madman. I didn't look back. I didn't stop. I just kept driving until the woods were far behind me and the beginnings of the town flickered at the edge of the road. I went straight to the ranger station. I stumbled out of my truck and ran inside, slamming the door behind me. The two guys on duty, Joe and Mark, were startled by my wild entrance. "'Whoa there! What's gotten into you?' Joe asked, concern in his eyes. I gulped. I was still trying to catch my breath. "'There's something... a creature... out there in the woods... by my place.' They exchanged a glance, a mixture of skepticism and worry on their faces. "'Easy now. What kind of creature we talking about?' Mark asked, his voice gentle like he was trying to calm a spooked horse. I swallowed hard. It was big, covered in fur, long arms, strong. It attacked my cabin, tried to break in. The words tumbled out of me in a confused rush. They listened patiently, but the doubt was still there. I couldn't blame them. It sounded crazy. You got any proof? Joe asked. I nodded. Come with me, see for yourselves. They hesitated, but something in my eyes must have convinced them because they gathered their gear and followed me to my truck. The drive back to the cabin was tense and quiet. I half expected the creature to emerge from the trees at any moment, but there was nothing. When we reached my place, nothing could have prepared them for the scene in front of us. The front of the cabin was in shambles. Splintered wood lay scattered across the porch, and claw marks raked deep into the siding. The shotgun lay abandoned on the ground. Joe let out a low whistle. Damn. Well, whatever caused this, it's long gone now. Come on, I said, stepping over the wreckage. I led them around the back of the cabin. There, in the soft earth, were footprints, huge, misshapen imprints that sank deep into the dirt. The rangers were silent, the disbelief melting off their faces. Now do you believe me? I asked my voice rough. Mark nodded. What the hell do you think that is? I didn't answer. The old legends I'd always scoffed at, those stories around campfires, suddenly didn't seem so far-fetched anymore. In the days that followed, the word spread quickly. Rangers found more tracks around my property. A few other folks out hiking reported similar marks deep in the forest, and even fleeting glimpses of a massive creature moving in the shadows. It became the talk of the town. They called in experts, wildlife guys, trackers, you name it. Nobody could definitively tell us what made the tracks, just that it wasn't anything they'd seen before. Locals started whispering about Bigfoot sightings, their eyes wide with a mix of fright and excitement. News crews showed up, poked around, got their stories. Most still treated it with a wink and a nudge like it was some kind of campfire tale blown out of proportion. Me? I just hunkered down in my cabin, shotgun by my side, barely sleeping. That thing was still out there, and I wasn't going to be caught by surprise again. The town eventually quieted down. Folks went back to their lives. Sightings grew more infrequent, the whole thing fading into a strange chapter of local folklore but I know better. I know what I saw, and sometimes on those quiet nights in the woods, I swear I can still hear something moving just beyond the tree line. Old habits die hard, I guess. Axe in one hand, shotgun in the other. That's just how I sleep better. The rangers, Joe and Mark, they believe me, sometimes stop by to check in. And maybe, just maybe, some of those old-timers in town the ones who nod knowingly when I tell the tale. They believe me too. Maybe they've seen a glimpse of their own in the deep woods, back in their day. And at the end of the story, after the locals share all those hushed stories about similar sightings, I suppose I just have one theory. The creature's name must be Bigfoot. I've lived in the woods all my life. 
Not the fancy woods you read about in kids' books, nothing like that. These woods, they have teeth. They have a mind of their own. Some days you walk and the path changes under your feet, like the forest itself is playing games. Other days, the quiet just wraps itself around you, thick enough to choke on. I know them, though. These woods know their sounds, their smells, their rhythm. My P.A., he was a backwoods man, too. Taught me which leaves you can eat, which ones will strip the skin off your bones if you ain't careful. He'd say, Boy, you gotta respect the woods. They ain't gonna bow to you. You gotta learn to bow to them. So here I am, forty years in the belly of the beast. I get by okay. I hunt, trap, do a little trading with some folks at the edge of town. Nothing to write home about, but then... Well, I ain't much of a letter writer anyway. Here's the thing. Started happening about two weeks ago. Found a deer. Half eaten. Like something just ripped open its gut and left the rest for the crows. Thought maybe a bear. Though nothing I'd seen around these parts before. Bears. They're territorial. They don't turn up overnight where they ain't been. Then it was rabbits. Then it was my hound dog, Ace. Let me tell you. A man forms a bond with a good hunting dog. You live hand in paw out here. To find him. Well, let's just say I ain't slept right since. Whatever it is, it's big, strong, and it's smart. Like it's figuring me out. Toying with me almost. My traps keep getting tripped, but empty. Bait gone. One time, I swear the trap was turned around, laid open right there in the path like it was laughing at me. I took to sleeping by shifts gun by my side even while I dozed. I don't doze so good anymore. It ain't natural, the pressure. Like a string pulled taut, just waiting to snap. The other night, well, that's when things got real. I was up late, stoking the fire. It was one of them still nights, not even the crickets making a peep. And then it hit me. That wasn't right. Too quiet. The silence kind of thickened, like something was out there holding its breath. I grabbed my rifle, eased over to the window, just a little slit between the logs where I could peek out. No moon, just the stars and the firelight making shadows dance on the trees, but I saw it, at the edge of the clearing, taller than a man, not quite a man, mind you, fur, thick and dark, head, misshapen, like a man who'd been smushed and stretched all wrong, muscle-bound too, rippling under that mangy fur. Hard to see clear in the darkness, but it felt like it saw me, like those eyes were burning right through the wall. I held my breath. The damned gun felt heavy in my suddenly sweaty hands. Then it moved. It dropped. Dropped to all fours like a big, sick dog. Then it shot off, faster than anything I've ever seen, crashing through the underbrush like it weren't even there. I swear, the ground shook, slept with the rifle across my chest that night. Still do. Don't know what it is out there. Don't know what it wants. But it's got me spooked. My P.A., he told me stories once, about things that lived in the dark heart of the woods. Old tales. Mostly meant to scare a kid into behaving, I thought. Now, I ain't so sure. The stillness is the worst part. I got no idea when it might strike again. I leave a lantern by the door now, hoping the light keeps it away. Sometimes, on those long nights, I swear I feel it out there, watching, waiting, heard something the other day, not close, not yet at least, sounded like a scream but stretched and wrong, like a man but not, echoed off the hills, sent shivers down my spine, I'm starting to think I ain't alone in these woods no more, problem is, I might only find out for sure when it's too late. The last few days had been a blur. The sound of that scream still rang in my ears. I'd tried telling myself an animal made that noise, Bobcat, maybe a mountain lion. But deep down, I know that wasn't right. Nothing in these woods sounded like that. And now, even the birdsong had gone silent. I decided it was time to move. Can't stay put and wait for whatever it is to come get me. Gotta take the fight to it somehow. Packed up camp bare essentials, rifle, ammo, knife, a little food and water. 
Can't be weighed down if I have to move fast. Headed into the hills, towards where the scream had come from. Figured that's where it had made its lair. Found it the next day. A cave. Stank of rotting meat and... Well, something else. A sharp, musky smell that made my skin crawl. Left my pack at the entrance. Didn't want nothing slowing me down. Took a deep breath. Stepped inside. It was dark. I could feel the damp stone, hear the faint echo of water dripping. Heard movement, a rasping breath right in front of me. Instincts took over. I threw myself back, rifle coming up. Fired blind into the darkness. A roar shook the cave, deafening. I scrambled back, hit the cave wall, dropped the rifle. Didn't stop to pick it up. Turned and ran for the entrance, heart pounding fit to burst out of my chest. Sunlight blinded me. I tripped, hit the ground hard, didn't get up. I lay there, chest heaving, the taste of copper in my mouth, waiting for it to come drag me back into the darkness. When it didn't, I dared to look back. The cave entrance gaped, black and empty. Had I imagined it all? Had the isolation played tricks on my mind? But when I stumbled back down the hill, hands scraped raw and bleeding, I knew. I knew the truth. That night, I made it back to town. Didn't bother sneaking around this time. Walked right down Main Street, ragged and wild-eyed. Barged into the sheriff's office. They took one look at me. Sat me down. Gave me coffee. Listened. Sheriff Thompson? He never did doubt me. Seen enough out here to know there's things that can't be explained. Heard rumors, too. Whispers about something big in the hills. Old stories mostly dismissed. Took a team back to the cave with me the next day. Found my rifle. Found some blood. Not human. Found scraps of fur, matted and stinking. Took it all back to the lab, folks. They ran their tests. Said the blood and fur didn't match nothing they'd ever seen. Didn't say it couldn't be real, though. News got out. Town's been on edge ever since. Some armed themselves. Some packed up and left. Some didn't change a thing. Stubborn as ever. Me, well, I stick around. Not leaving my woods, not now. There's talk of more searches, of hunting it down. I stay out of it mostly. I know better than to hunt what hunts you. Sometimes at night, I still hear it. A distant howl that cuts through the dark. Reminds me of what's out there. Reminds me I'm lucky to still be out here. Folks sometimes ask me what it was. I just shrug. Say I saw something, something big. Some of the old-timers, they nod. Say maybe, just maybe, it's the Bigfoot. Some stories, they just don't die. Let's say I've been into the backwoods for years. Not a survivalist, just a guy who likes the woods better than the city. Learned a few tricks. I hunt. I fish. Got myself a little cabin on this old logging tract in the Ozarks. No roads, no neighbors, nothing but trees and quiet. Perfect, right? Here's the funny thing. I never felt alone out there. Not until recently. It started small, just little things. I swear I heard footsteps once, heavy ones circling my cabin just out of sight. Found a deer carcass the next day, skinned like an expert but missing a haunch. Thought it was odd, but figured maybe a cougar. Not many around, but they happen. Then things got weirder. My traps kept getting sprung clean, like nothing tripped them at all. I even staked one out, watched it like a hawk. Nothing touched it, but the next morning... The bait was gone and the trap was set off. Then came the noises at night. Not animal noises, mind you. Heavy breathing, the snap of branches under a big weight, sometimes. I swear. Whispers that were almost like words. Not my imagination, either. My dog picked up on it all too well, hackles up and whimpering by the door. I started keeping the rifle at the ready. Figured it was probably some drifter stumbling around half-crazed. Still, it was putting me on edge. It all came to a head last week. I was out tracking a buck when I lost the trail along a creek bed. That's when I saw the footprints. These weren't human. They were huge, 
each one twice as long as my boot. Toes splayed wide, looked like they were made for walking on mud. Now I know plenty about big critters, but I'd never seen a print like that. Whatever made those tracks, it was big, and it was close. I got the heck out of there fast, made it back to the cabin and barred the door, rifle in hand. Never knew the night could feel so long, listening to every creak and rustle outside. Every snap of a branch had me flinching. Morning came and I ventured out, gun loaded and nerves on fire. Didn't find a damn thing, no more tracks, no strange sounds. I almost convinced myself I'd gone nuts. Almost. Then on the way back, there it was, standing between the trees, tall as a damned pine. Fur-covered, bipedal, with the kind of snout like you'd see on a hog, except longer. Bulkier than a bear, but too lean to match one. The whole thing didn't make sense. It stood there just watching me, unmoving, like it was sizing me up, figuring me out. My dog, bless her soul, went berserk, barking and charging. It swatted her aside like she was a fly. I could hear the whimpers from the ground as it looked back at me. I shouldered the rifle, aimed, took a breath. I squeezed the trigger. The shot echoed, shattering the silence. The creature flinched, its massive bulk staggering back. I pumped another round. This time it hit its mark. A howl pierced the forest an unnatural sound filled with pain and rage. I didn't wait for more. I turned, sprinted back to the cabin, fumbling the key into the lock, slammed the door shut through every bolt. Inside, I found my dog huddled by the fireplace, whimpering. Poor thing was still shaking. I knelt beside her, ran my hand over her fur. It's okay, girl, it's okay. Was it, though? What the hell was that thing out there? My thoughts spun, had to think. Had to get out of there, but where to? The nearest town was a good two-day hike, maybe more now with my dog hurt. Could we risk it? Suddenly a thud against the wall nearly sent me through the roof. It came again, followed by a scratching sound like claws on the wood. The window rattled. Fear squeezed my guts. This whole cabin was a flimsy trap. Couldn't stay here. Had to try for it. I made my decision grabbed my supplies, the rifle, coaxed my dog to her feet. We'd head to the creek, follow it down the mountain. Hopefully, that would throw the creature off. I opened the door just a crack, peered out. For a moment, nothing. Then a shadow moved, massive and dark near the tree line. I swore under my breath. We had to go, now. Holding my rifle at the ready, I stepped out with my dog at my heel, each step felt like a mile. The forest wasn't just quiet. It was expectant, like the whole place was holding its breath to see what we did, what I did. Suddenly my dog yelped, bolted into the bushes. Hey! I called, lunged after her, but it was too late. A scream cut through the air, then a chilling silence. No! I tore into the undergrowth, heart pounding, nothing but a tangle of leaves and broken branches. My dog was gone. Grief hit me like a fist. I sank to my knees, the rifle forgotten. What was I even doing anymore? Every step just seemed to make it worse. But I couldn't give up entirely. Got to my feet, trudged on. I reached the creek as the first rays of dawn broke through the trees. The water was clear, cold. Just what I needed to clear my head enough to think, and that's when I saw the trail. It ran alongside the creek, big, two-toed footprints like those I'd seen before, except these were fresh. The thing must have been following us, clever bastard. I decided quickly. There was no use running. I'd find a spot to hide, a good ambush spot with clear sight lines. Maybe I could catch the creature off guard, put an end to it once and for all. After half a mile, the creek curved up a small rise. Trees crowded both sides, a cluster of boulders near the top. Perfect. I scrambled up, crouched low between the boulders. Rifle up, I waited. Hours passed. Nothing. I began to wonder if I'd lost it. Maybe my nerves were shot and I'd imagined the whole chase. Hope sparked in me and just as quickly died. A sound. A snort from below. I peered over the boulder. It was there, huge and hulking in the fading light. It sniffed the air, 
looked directly toward my hiding spot. A shiver ran down my spine. It knew. I took aim. The first shot caught it in the shoulder. It roared, a monstrous cry that sent birds scattering. Stumbled back but regained its footing. I fired again and again. Hit it twice more. But it just staggered, bleeding and enraged. It lunged up the slope straight at me. I squeezed off one last shot as it crashed into the boulders, a scream trapped in my throat. Then impact. Pain. Darkness. I woke with a splitting headache. Something wet dripped down my forehead. I tried to sit up, but strong hands held me down. Easy now, son. A voice, thick with a southern drawl. You've been through a hell of a thing. I blinked, sunlight blurring my vision. Two men stood over me, one with a weathered face and a sheriff's badge. The other, an old Native American dude, had eyes like black stones. Where? I started, but my throat burned like fire. Found you up the creek. Figured that creature got you, the sheriff said. We've been tracking it. Took out some of our folks. I remembered my poor dog. Closed my eyes against the wave of guilt and anger. The Native American knelt beside me. You showed courage facing it. We followed your trail, your shots. Killed the beast a ways down from here. Killed it? I tried to sit again, but the sheriff gently pushed me back. Had the whole town out with torches and rifles. The sheriff nodded. That thing weren't going down easy, but we got it in the end. Relief washed over me. Bittersweet. What? What was it? I rasped. The Native American spoke, his voice low. Old stories from my people. A beast from the deep woods. We don't name it. Brings it too close. Something in his tone made me look at him more sharply. A flicker of understanding passed between him and the sheriff. Some of the fellas say they think it was a Bigfoot, the sheriff supplied awkwardly. The old man only nodded, his expression unreadable. But I knew. Whatever I'd seen out there, whatever had stalked me, it was no Bigfoot of campfire stories. It was something older, wilder, something that shouldn't exist. And it was finally dead. I could only hope it was the only one.